We have really fundamentally one product stream to worry about. Uh, some of you have several combustible dust product streams to worry about. But look, we want to characterize how it is that, that we've tried to manage our combustible dust uh, risks and allow you to translate that perhaps into your own situation. Uh, a second part of the conversation relates to the material safety data sheets that we've developed. And actually, you've all got a copy on your seats. Uh, we'll talk some more about those. We think that those, those are a new generation of material safety data sheets that provide far more information about combustible dust risks than anything than any of their predecessor documents. Imperial sugar was probably like much of the rest of the industry. We relied on date, publicly available data re, re, that, that attempted to describe and quantify the risks of sugar dust. But it was really quite limited data. It was available in public sources, and oftentimes it was simply a matter of referring to sugar. Well, referring to sugar is kind of like referring to plastic. All sugars are not created as the same. They're not the same particle size. They're not the same moisture content. The crystals may not be the same size and shape. Uh, it depends on where you take them out of the process. So we, our, the, the information and knowledge that was available was, retrospectively was really superficial. So we, under, we working with our prime dust control consultant, Chilworth Technologies, and we've got an acknowledgement slide a little later, went through a series of analyses where we, we analyzed over 120 different samples of sugar from our process. We analyzed the raw sugar, and even the, the raw sugars can vary with regard to moisture content, uh, particularly with regard to moisture content, which significantly influences the, the explosibility hazards or risks that associated with the products. But we also analyzed, of course, all of our final products, and, I, and, and as we'll, we'll, we'll speak a little later, for example, there's a significant difference in the explosible properties of powdered sugar versus extra fine granulated sugar versus brown sugar. They're all really quite different. So again, we can't really talk about sugar in a generic term. We also looked for our, for our own sake and to, to help protect our own people at the intermediate products. What happens between the the receipt of raw sugar and the shipment or development of a final product. Well, it goes through a series of intermediate steps, and we wanted to understand the explosible risks that were present with each of those, those steps as well. Kevin talked a little earlier about the definitions of MIE or minimum ignition energy, and MIE is affected by a number of factors, uh, dust particle size, concentration, moisture content, dust and air temperature, and, and oxygen. Uh, concentration. But here on the right, we've got the device that is used to actually test for MIE. And um, let me show you what happens. The, 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 this is a one liter Hartman tube uh, with a couple of electrodes on, on either side where you're able to adjust the voltages and create an arc or a spark uh, while simultaneously suspending a dust inside of the tube. And the example that I'm going to show you occurred as, as they were suspending one one hundredth of an ounce of sugar inside of the tube. That's one one hundredth of an ounce. Uh, this is a, the test device that's used to measure dispersibility. And in, in this uh, tube, we've got uh, sugar particles ranging from 25 to 38 microns. And you'll notice at the bottom that the tube is rather opaque versus the top. So we've, all, we've got, a, <clears throat> this, this would indicate, again, that, there, that it takes a while for the sugar dust, after it's dispersed, to settle. Let me quantify that for you a little bit. And, that for very small particles, three microns, which for in our granulated sugar is only about 0.05% of the total, but keeping in mind also that for, you know, here we, we process millions of pounds of sugar per day. So 0.05% might be a very small percentage, but when, 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 when translated across four to five million pounds of sugar a day, it, it can be a volume. Uh, these three micron 
particles will descend only about five feet per hour. So in other words, after they get into the air and they're subject to breezes, winds, drafts, and what have you, it takes a long time for them to find a surface. And they can, they can drift a very long distance from the point where they were emitted. One of um, 10 new material safety data sheets that, that we've developed. And uh, this, it's not our intent today to, to go over all of these, but I would like to, to point out some of the highlights and the one that you've got is for uh, granulated sugar. Again, in these, we've got, we, we broke these into 10 uh, families of products, and we've got over 40 dry products. But some of them had uh, combustible dust risks that were very, very similar. So we were able to group those versus having 40 material safety data sheets, we've got 10. And um, we've uh, identified the, the, the products by name that are covered by the material safety data sheets. It's really happened quite quickly that, that things have escalated and you've got a lot of members of the industry, for better or worse, and I guess it's really for worse, who haven't yet gotten re really with the program. And it, it's a lot of work and it's a lot of cost.